I've reacted to medical scenes from Family Guy, The Simpsons, and got an overwhelming response from you guys wanting me to react to more adult cartoons. That's why today I'm reacting to some, dare I say, medical situations and injuries that occurred on the highly popular TV show, American Dad. For those of you who don't know, American Dad is a show by the creators of Family Guy. American Dad is an animated sitcom about the life of a conservative CIA agent who resides with his family in Washington DC with an alien who escaped a secret military base. But before we get into it, my name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm an ER doc that deals with every medical situation that you can think of. Gunshot wounds, COVID, broken hips, firework mishaps. I created this channel to answer the medical questions that I get from people every single day. If you find this video helpful, please smack that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, you ready to watch some fun medical clips? Yeah! Let's react to American Dad. Okay, Langley Medical Center. Can you believe Dad makes us listen to his physical <laughs> results every year? Can you believe I've never had a physical? Oh. All right, hold on. They're there for a checkup, right? We do need to establish a relationship with a physician or a doctor. That way, when you actually do get sick, you have somewhere to go instead of having to go to the emergency department or urgent care right away, that you can call your primary care doctor who already knows you and has met you. Play the intro music. I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> Play the music, nerd. <laughs> 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 here, I wish I walked into a room every day when I'm at work with that kind of music. I'm ready to go. It's almost like Space Jams or like some basketball intro music. Okay. He's got, he's only in his skivvies over here, which is what you're supposed to do when you see a doctor. But you're supposed to wear a hospital gown or a gown at the, the doctor's office, so you're covered. You're not exposed in case somebody opens the door. You don't have to be seen by everybody. And this way, we only expose the areas that we need to look at and we keep everything else covered. That is the most appropriate thing that a physician, a nurse, or anybody who works in healthcare does. We're coming out in full force. Doc, tell them what's <laughs> Papa's packet. Well, you've put on five oh pounds since last year. Bigger! Is better. <laughs> you shrunk a quarter of an inch. So much man in such a tiny package. At least he's making his gains and losses into a positive, right? So he gained weight and just got shorter. Shorter basically as we get older, gravity is weighing down on us. But actually the reason most of the time we get shorter is dehydration. There's a lack of fluid in our discs of the vertebral column that actually make us shorter. So drinking fluids and rehydrating those back up, you'll actually gain a little bit of height if you're dehydrated. It's pretty interesting. And your cholesterol is high. Are there no heights I can't reach? Cholesterol is a serious issue. Oh, so high cholesterol. HDL, LDL, triglycerides, these are all things that need to be followed by your doctor to make sure that you reduce your risk, basically, of developing plaques, arthrosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, these things that increase your risk for heart attacks and strokes. It's looking like down the line, your left knee is gonna need to be replaced. Right knee carrying the team to the <laughs> Okay, so he's telling him that he needs his left knee replaced, so he's saying that his <laughs> right knee is carrying him to the finish line. <laughs> Knee replacements are not funny. Orthopedic surgeon goes in and literally chops off the bottom part of your femur and the top part of your tibia and puts in hardware there and then a piece of plastic usually in between so you have some joint mobility, but it's not like your own native joint. So you wanna do your best to keep what we got and keep it as long as we possibly can. Uh, I know, tell him if I have AIDS or not. You uh, still don't have AIDS. <laughs> Hear that Francine? Doc's given me a prescription for raw dogging. <laughs> Yeah. I just like that the whole family reacts in the negative way. So he said he doesn't have AIDS, which is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is usually caused by HIV. Hopefully he doesn't have HIV. If he is, he's being treated, but at least he has not progressed to the further worsened syndrome. It says here on your mom's Facebook page that Haley's kidneys have failed. Goodness. Her next update says your oh. dad might not be Haley's father. Six people like this. So that leaves you oh, as what? the next logical donor. Oh. You know how Ooh. they take kidneys out? No. You'll walk into your room and there will be plastic sheets all over the floor. Before you can react, <laughs> a man in a ski mask will tie you to a chair with an Indian braided belt he got on vacation in Santa Fe. He'll turn on some Huey Lewis. Oh my gosh. And then cut the damn thing out with a rusty keyhole saw. No antiseptic. Yeah, no. No Novocaine, no nothing. Just the song, Hip to be Square, drowning out your <laughs> boyish screams. 
Okay, so kidney failure usually occurs for multiple different reasons. People end up on dialysis, and then you can actually get a kidney transplant to basically get off dialysis so you can have a normal functioning kidney. We need our kidneys to basically filter out toxins in our body and to excrete what we need to excrete out and keep what we need. To become a donor, you have to be, you know, type and cross match to make sure that you have the same antibodies, blood types, all these different things in your body to make sure that the recipient doesn't reject the donor kidney. Otherwise, the body sees it as foreign and will reject it and it will, it'll fail. So when you have a donor, you end up going to the hospital, lots of tests, very clean, sterile surgical procedure. Not what they're describing as a murder scene with plastic sheets, weird music, and just a weird situation that this alien is describing. Also, this is the first time I've ever seen this show and there's an alien playing on the internet, looking on Facebook and talking about kidney transplants. Wait, this isn't even what I ordered. Yeah, well, all I got is this artisanal microbe. I like how the alien has hair on. <laughs> Apricot wheat? Tuna can Jerry's late for his rehearsal dinner. Hey, how about the pretzels? Never gonna catch me. <laughs> Apricot wheat? Uh, my heart. Oh my God. Roger, are you okay? Keep an eye on Betsy. She's definitely stealing from the till. <laughs> no, I ain't. All right, hold on a second. So we got an alien with a wig running a bar, getting pissed off that they delivered apricot wheat beer. For a traditionalist who likes regular beer, all these flavor beers can probably rub some bartenders. I'm tired of you accusing my wife of stealing. Eat me in the parking lot in five minutes. Stop watching me switch characters. I, I like call all an the ambulance. different outfits. I love it. Call an ambulance. Get somebody to the hospital if they're having a heart attack or weird symptoms, right? Roger, you're awake. Mr. Smith, please stay in bed. So, so many bar. times you... patients come in, we do something quick, the workup's not done and they want to get out of there. And as physicians, we're like, no, 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 let us finish up the workup. Let's make sure you're safe and then we'll get you home. But if a doctor says, stay in the hospital, let's treat you or let's make sure you're all right. They're looking out for your best interests. There's no other interest other than your health that a doctor or a nurse practitioner or a PA or, or even a nurse is looking for. That bar gave you a heart attack. And if you keep up this pace, Oh my gosh. We sometimes do say kind of more dreadful things to keep people in the hospital as best we can. Ugh, Francine, just close the curtain. I can tell by looking at them that they're the type to nod like they understand and then go right back. All right, let's take a look here. Numbers are crazy in the background. 215, 312, and 115. So hopefully that's not a weird blood pressure reading, a heart rate's going through the roof but at least there's an IV bag of some yellow material. Typically, the fluids that we have in the hospital are clear. There are some things that are neon in color, actually, pretty cool. There's something called TPN, which is basically vitamins in a bag. But maybe because it's an alien, these numbers are accurate and not normal for a human. You better... <laughs> ah, this is oxygen, not nitrous. He wanted nitrous oxide, which people use to relax, sometimes during procedures at a dentist's office or oral surgeon's office but it was just oxygen. So you don't get any weird, funny feelings typically from oxygen. I love it. They're on two tables kind of angled up. <laughs> we don't angle the table up like this. And they're strapped down. What does that mean? Oh, they're, they're strapped down because of... What? Okay, wait a minute. All right, so they're strapped down to the bed because they say that they're a danger to the, either themselves or others, which sometimes happens when somebody is having a psychotic break, they're going through something called psychosis. If you're strapped down to a bed for too long, you could be fighting and you can get something called rhabdo, which is basically muscle breakdown, which then ultimately could clog up your kidneys and cause kidney failure. So then the doctor's now saying that they're gonna do a lobotomy. So we don't do with a lobotomy anymore. That's old school therapy basically what, that they did on patients a while ago for psychiatric reasons when they were off, bipolar, schizophrenic, and they basically, Nope, just a little spot of ink to show me where to stick this drill. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just said it's a little spot of ink. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. After we do have power tools in the operating room. Actually, we even have them in the, in the ER. We have a drill that actually puts IVs in. It's pretty crazy. But hopefully they're not drilling into this guy's skull. Your troubles are over. Really? Because to me, they seem to be smart. Why don't you turn off the drill and we'll talk yeah, about the point do. of view. 
Typically, you probably even want the head not moving and maybe strapped down a little bit or the patient sedated. Oh my gosh! Holy cow! <laughs> this is horrible! One that drilled, you don't drill somebody's head like that. And the fact that it got stuck and started spinning around the other way is, is horrible. But no, you do not drill that far. You just went through all that brain material. If you do need to drill into the skull, which we do in trauma sometimes, when there's bleeding in the brain, there's something called a burr hole that the neurosurgeon will do. It's actually a mechanical manual tool, not something that's power tool, that does bore a hole through the skull, to basically so the neurosurgeon can actually relieve pressure on the brain from bleeding. And that way they don't just have to cut open the whole skull to relieve the pressure and get all that blood out. It's pretty impressive what they can do. And they've saved a lot of people's lives that way. Okay, all right. The alien must be waking up. Roger, thank God you're awake. You've been in a coma. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. Good old Roger, in a coma. So there's multiple reasons to have a coma. Sometimes traumatic brain injuries can do it. The medical uh, field will actually put somebody in an induced coma to allow the body to recover from whatever process is going on. This long or this long? The first one. <laughs> Roger, I just want to tell you how happy we are that we didn't go along. With Got a good EKG plan. machine yes. going on in the back. That's so the, the right to signal. Dismiss, we could be in here with you. Mom, Dad, thank you for not listening to Roger. Well, this has been a grand reunion. <laughs> Roger, you're awake, which means you're probably alive. Let's check your vitals. <laughs> what the? What? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, all right. So one, awake, checking your vitals, your vital signs, blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen saturation, and breathing rate, right? Those are your, your four vital signs. But then the alien touched the doctors, now seeing him, what looks like him losing his medical degree. A body. A what? Lawsuit. Doctor, I just had a vision. You're Lawsuits. being fired by a baby. Well, that's impossible. Unless what? it was a doctor baby. The baby who's in charge of this hospital. But I assure you, your vision wasn't real. It was nothing but a post-comatic delusion. You just need a little more rest. Well, so, okay, so we saw a scene. So when patients are in the ICU, admitted for a long time in the hospital, they actually can go through something called delirium, where they're confused, agitated, not themselves. And even when people are in comas, they get weird dreams and question if you believe afterlife or not. So a lot of unique things happen when somebody is in a coma that are still not really explained. I'm a dedicated professional with a spotless record. <laughs> He's a you dedicated doctor and somebody else is dying like next to him. That doesn't happen in a hospital. People are hooked up to monitors when things go off. Staff runs as quickly as they can to that individual to check to see what's going on. And by the rhythm of that guy that's on the other bed, it looked like he went into you know, course VTAC, VFib, or even something called torsades because that video was going crazy on that screen. All right, those clips are a little far-fetched, but for a comedic animated show, it was super funny and amusing to comment on. Do you have a favorite show that features medical situations that you want me to react to? Let me know which show or episode in the comments below. And if you want to see me react to video games, check me out on the Experts React series on Gameology right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more fun videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.